In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to adjust the parameters on the V-speed bugs, which slide along this airspeed ticker tape, and also how to use the stopwatch timer. So we will click on the timer references soft key and get the following window. And we'll immediately see that we've got the timer, which is at zero. It's going to count up, and it's waiting for us to start. So all we have to do is hit enter. And we can see that it's now counting up and it's asking us when do we want to stop. So I'm going to stop now. I'll just hit enter again and it stops the timer and it asks us if we want to reset and I'll hit enter because I do and it's back to zero. If I want to count down I'll rotate the outside of this FMS knob so that I've highlighted the up field by using the inside rotating FMS dial I can select to count down and I'll hit enter because I want to count down I can then rotate the FMS outer knob again to highlight this time the timer and if I move the inner knob that takes us to the hour the next motion of the inner knob or dial will make us count up or down now if I go on the outer knob I switch to minutes and I can use the inner knob again to adjust that and if I hit the outer knob it takes us to seconds and I can adjust that again with the inner knob once I have what I like I'll hit enter and we can move back to the start using the outside knob hit enter and voila we are now counting down so we'll pause that again We'll reset the timer. And notice it resets not to zero, but to the time that we had entered in there. If I want to go back to zero, I would have to manually reset this to zero, which wouldn't make sense because you're not going to count down from zero. But if I want to reset it to zero to count up, I just move the FMS, use the inner FMS to change this back to up, hit enter. Now it says, do you want to start? I'll say, sure let's start and then I'll just pause it and reset it there we go now it's back to zero and that's all there is to that now let's see how we can adjust these ticker tape speeds so we can see we've got um, the best glide speed which is 75 knots VG which is right there we got VR the rotation speed which is 59 knots we've got VX which is the best uh, angle of climb so that you're going to cover the least amount of horizontal distance uh, to climb vertically and that's 64 knots and then if we want to climb the fastest or the best performance climb in that sense we have VY here which is 84 knots and we can see it over there on the ticker tape so let's say we want to turn some of these off maybe I don't want to see all of them I'll use the outside FMS knob to jump down from the start to this glide field I can rotate the inner scale now and I can change the value and well you can see there's a star here which means it's not the factory standard and that might be because maybe I've installed wing tips on it which affect the stall speed or I've put new fairings on the landing gear whatever the reason here's where you can change them but keep in mind that when you turn off and turn back on the G1000 these will reset to the factory preset values so I go back to 75 maybe I don't want to show the glide speed at all maybe I think it's too cluttered well I can change that by going here so basically if I just use the outer FMS knob again to, it'll go over next to this field and I can use the inside FMS to turn it off which we see it went away or I can turn it back on and it's back again and that's the same thing is true for all of these other ones you can just keep uh, working down the list by going on the outside FMS key and you can go back by hitting the back button now what's not intuitive is let's say I fiddle with all of these so I'm gonna I'm gonna monkey around with all these values and okay now they're all messed up 
I want to reset these and I don't want to go back and reset these all individually and I might not remember off the top of my head what they all are. So we can bypass that by hitting the menu button and we can turn all the references on, which they are. If we go to the next field, we can turn all the references off. Now they're all gone. We can turn them back on. They are all uh, appearing again on the ticker tape. And I can reset them all to the default values. And again, I just hit enter. And boom, they're back to the default values. So that's all there is to it in terms of changing these reference values. I will make one comment. Um, as a person who works on flight displays, I don't work for Garmin, um, I do not like the fact that you have to hit this menu button to go here to change these references because essentially you're now going two layers deep into menu pages to change this. It's not at all intuitive and if, uh, if we look here, if I didn't tell you to hit that menu button, amongst all these other buttons, you would have never have known that by hitting the menu button, you would have gotten to this screen. So it's it's very much sort of like a a secret if you if you don't really read the manual and use it. Um, to be fair, it's not a critical problem here in this case because let's face it, you're really not going to be doing this in the airplane in flight. So if you forget how to reset all of them by hitting the menu button, it's not super critical to safety, but it is something that's kind of an annoyance in terms of uh, just being able to use this on a simple practical level. Um, but that's all there is to changing these parts. Um, I'm using once again the Garmin G1000 trainer. You can purchase it from their website. I did. It's about 30 bucks and it's really great. It'll really help you out um, in terms of using it and not having to learn how to use it on the airplane which is going to be much much more expensive so I highly recommend you get it